Hello, and welcome to Conquering Finale. My name is Jason Lafredo, and this is a subscriber request. Today's request comes from Vinny Ciro and Marilo Alvarenga, and I hope I'm pronouncing those correctly, who both asked about how to make Finale play notes only the first or second time in repeated passages. Now, this question has actually come up a lot, and I feel like I may even be missing another person who specifically requested this video many months ago. Um, and certainly this question appears in the forums quite often. So I guess I can't really procrastinate on this issue any longer, so I decided to do this today. Before I get into that, I just want to show you how you can submit a request for a video. First of all, you must be a subscriber, so click the subscribe button on YouTube and or sign up for the mailing list by clicking this link on the website. Then just send me an email with your request. Lastly, if your request makes it to video, please do your best to donate to the cause whatever you can. It would be most appreciated. More details can be found following the link in the description below or directly on the subscriber request page of my website. Now, enough procrastinating. Let's get to it. All right, so in this file, I've got two scenarios set up that's going to uh, illustrate how to do this. And let's just go ahead and look at the first one because this is probably the more common thing that you'll see. And uh, so you can kind of see what's going on here. I've got these four measures. I want the, the trumpet to play these three eighth notes and then play this half note only the first time and then go along and don't play this the first time. Come back here so we won't hear the B and then uh, in the, the, the fourth measure the second time we'll hear these notes going into the next measure, right? This is fairly common if you're using a lot of repeats and, and stuff like this. So um, this might be something you need to do. And obviously if you were to just play this back without doing anything, uh, you'll see the issue. It's basically just going to play everything all the time, right? And then again, which is clearly not what we want. You know, Finale doesn't understand these semantically, so we kind of have to program Finale to do this the correct way. Now, it's a little bit complicated. It involves using uh, playback uh, features of expressions. So what I'm going to end up doing here is I'm going to go ahead and create a new um, expression here on this, uh, th this second measure of the repeat. And I'm going to go ahead in here, and I'm going to create a new technique text, and I'm going to call this mute uh, first time. All right, and what I'm going to do is actually, you know, what I can do is also select this and just hide this so we're not seeing it print. You'll see it in the score, but you won't see it print. And then we can go into playback. And if we go into the type, there's a bunch of things here. And you would think that the thing that we, you'd want to do is choose the key velocity. This doesn't exactly work because, especially with human playback, human playback ignores um, the the key velocity information and expression. So this is not really an effective way to do this. The, the way that you really need to do this is with controller data. So we're going to use controller. And there's a whole bunch of different types of controller data. And the one that we want is volume, which is number seven. Now we're muting. So the thing that we need to do is set the value to zero, which will you know, change the volume to zero, which will mute it, right? But we also have this option here to play only on pass. And this is what we're interested in. We want to play the playback of this expression, which is to mute, which is the opposite of play, if, you, that, if you're following. <laughs> we want to play the mute <laughs> only on the first time through, right? So we'll choose that, uh, we'll, we'll check that and say play only on pass one to mute it, and we click OK. And we create that expression, and it's attached to that D right there. So the first time through, uh, Finale is going to get to this, and it's going to mute the whole channel, right? So you're not going to hear these Ds. And then when you go into the repeat, it's still going to be muted. So there's nothing we need to do with this first one, because the second time through, uh, the, the channel is still muted. But what we need to do is tell Finale to turn this back on the second time. And now I, I can actually use the, the expression that I already have here and just uh, go here in here and edit this kind of in the same manner. So we're just going to take this expression for playback. We're going to choose controller number seven, which is volume. And instead of zero, we're going to turn it back on, which is 101. Now I'm getting this value. This is the, uh, the volume that's set in the score manager for the trumpet. So you want to match that to whatever you're using. If you had done some adjustments and made this 95, you'd put it at 95, etc. Right? And of course, this time we're going to only play on pass two. So the second time it gets to this expression, it will play this uh, controller data, turning it back to 101, if that makes sense. And we assign that. And so really all I had to do is add this one and change the, the, uh, the playback uh, uh, functionality of this one here. And let's see if that works. So we hear the notes the first time. 
and then nothing, and then we should hear it again. There you go. All right, so that's kind of how you do that. Um, you know, this is a, a common scenario that you might see, but let's take a look at something that's a little bit less common and uh, certainly more complicated. Because now what we're dealing with is sort of an alternate line, so you can see kind of what I'm intending here. I want the lower notes to be played the first time and the upper notes to be played the second time in the repeat. This might happen, uh, particularly in vocal music, if you have like alternate lyrics that need different rhythms or something, and you want to you know play back accurately. Um, this scenario might be might look familiar. Now the problem with this is that these types of mute and playback instructions that I used above they apply to the the whole instrument. So you can kind of see what's going on. We can't really do that here because if I just mute and play back, we're muting everything and playing back everything. So that's not really uh, what we need to do. But you can see that I have separate layers to work with. So what I can do is actually parse these expressions out a little bit by layers. And I'm going to show you how to do that. So here's what we're going to do. I'm going to start by adding another expression here. Um, I'm just going to duplicate this one. And I'm going to call this uh, mute layer 1. Right, And we're going to go to playback and controller 0. Uh, it's set to value 0. Uh, play only on pass one because the layer one does not play on the first pass and assign that and then here's the second trick to this is that you know this is going to apply to everything unless you tell it not to so if you shift double click here you'll get this expression assignment dialog box and you'll see that it says on playback affect current layer or we can choose a specific layer so I want it to affect only layer one Right, so what this is going to do is the first time through, it's only going to mute layer 1. So layer 2 will continue to play and will not hear layer 1. The second time through, we do want to hear layer 1. So I can go ahead and, and edit this one. And we'll see what we got here. Playback, controller, seven, oops, 7. We're unmuting this, so go back to 101. Play on pass 2 because we do want to hear layer 1 on the second pass, right? So that's all set to go. I've just edited the expression that already exists there. And again, what I'm going to do is shift return to get into the expression assignment and make sure that this is applying only to layer one, right? Um, so theoretically, layer two is continuing to go on uh, as layer one is being muted and then unmuted, right? So we need to essentially mute layer two uh, the second time, right? So I'm going to add yet another one. And I'll duplicate this. And we'll call this mute layer two playback uh, controller 7 at 0 but not on the first pass on the second pass this time right and we click OK and we assign that and there we go we're muting layer 2 and once again we have to go into the uh, expression assignment dialog box and make sure that we're only affecting layer 2 right now I could if I really wanted to it's not necessarily but I'll, I'll do it anyway I'll just take this first time expression here just to make sure that we're absolutely certain this will work controller 7, 101, play on pass 1, right, so that we know that we're definitely not muting layer 2 the first time, and once again, make sure that that's applied only to layer 2, right? And so you, I hope you can follow the logic of what's happening. We've muted layer 1 the first time. We're playing layer 1 the second time. We're uh, playing layer 2 the first time and muting layer 2 the second time, if that makes sense. Now, once this has all been done, at the end of this, what we're getting is layer 1 unmuted and layer 2 muted in this last bar here. So you may want to add one extra one here, and I'll just call this um, play layer 2, uh, just so that we can kind of reset everything back to uh, square one, controller 101, plan pass one. Actually, you don't even need to have this here this time because it's going gonna, it's gonna to apply to any time. And play layer two, and once again, make sure that that's applied uh, to layer two specifically so that we've um, basically unmuted layer two and so that both layer one and layer two are unmuted here. All right, so that's theoretically how you do this. So let's see if that worked. So I'm going to go to my play act playback controls here and make sure that we're starting at bar 9 and then see if this works and unfortunately it does not work it plays the last thing but it basically doesn't play anything else so why in the world is that well here's the deal with these uh, controller data information if I were to just go in here and show you this again 
for the playback, all of these controller data and a lot of other things within this uh, expression designer for playback, they actually apply to the entire MIDI channel. And that's really what's key here. So if we go into the score manager, you can see that my trumpet here is playing back on channel one. However, you can open this triangle and what you'll see is that layer two is playing on channel one as well as layer one. And everything is playing on channel one in this trumpet part. The problem is that those controller datas apply to all the layers all the time. So even though I'm telling Finale to mute layer two and mute layer one and turn on layer one and turn on layer two, it's all conflicting information because uh, when you tell it to mute layer two, you're basically telling it to mute the whole MIDI channel, which applies to layers one, two, three, and four. So that's, that's not gonna work, which is why you're just hearing it muted all the time because the, the, the mute instruction is overriding the play instruction, I guess, in this case. But the way that we can make this work is to actually set layer one and layer two to different MIDI channels, which you can do in the score manager. And if you want to do something uh, to this effect, you have to do this in order to make it work. So um, we'll leave layer one alone. For layer two, what I'm going to do is just change the channel here to layer three. So now, oops, layer three. So now I've got this one instrument uh, using two separate uh, MIDI channels, channel one and three. I've got uh, channel two set for my acoustic bass here. Um, and so that's that's what's going on. And so now that there's two separate MIDI channels, those uh, instructions that I'm dealing with in terms of you know just muting layer two or just muting layer one, those will work because those layers are now on separate MIDI channels. Um, and I believe if I had set this up right, this should work now. So let's see what happens. So there's layer two, and there's layer one. All right, so there you go. It is a little bit complicated, particularly particularly when you have situations like this where you've got multiple layers and you want one thing playing one time and another thing playing another time. You do have to go into the score manager and split your instrument into multiple lay, uh, multiple MIDI channels. It, it does get, get a little complicated like that, but that's how you would set that up. Um, again, this scenario up here is a little bit easier because it's all just on one MIDI channel and the, the instructions to mute and unmute are a little bit more straightforward. But that's how you would deal with both situations. Um, Vinny was the one that actually asked about this particular situation where you have uh, alternate lines in, within the repeat. So um, so thanks Vinny for uh, bringing that to my attention and uh, Murillo was just asking about it more in general. So uh, there you go. And like I said, this question does come up a lot. So um, uh, I'm sorry that I delayed in, a, in response for so long, but uh, hopefully this will be helpful to both of you guys and also anybody else that has been asking this on the forums a lot because I know that this question gets asked a lot. So there you go. That is playing only the first or second time in Finale. Hopefully this has helped. Hopefully you've learned something and uh, I really appreciate the request. Once again, thanks for watching. I really appreciate it. Don't forget to become a subscriber yourself and I will see you soon on the next video.